Parents across America struggling to feed their little ones in the face of the formula shortage. New York Congresswoman and new mom Elise Stefanik called out the president on Twitter. Here it is. Joe Biden continues to put America last by shipping pallets of baby formula to the southern border as American families face empty shelves. This is unacceptable. American mothers and their babies shouldn't suffer because of the Biden border crisis. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi quick to fire back. As usual, her statement is totally irresponsible. Babies are crying. We need to get them food. We must do something as quickly as possible, but as safely as possible, and use caution for these babies. But we have to move quickly to do that. And part of this is, again, the supply chain issue. And by caution, does she mean let's ignore it for weeks before we actually acknowledge that it's happening? Republican Congresswoman Kat Kamak shared this photograph last week that backs up Stefanik's claim. The image shows a border detention center in Donna, Texas, stocked with baby formula despite the nationwide shortage. Congresswoman Kamak in Focus Now. Thank you for being with me this hour. Uh, you know, I was looking. Doesn't the FDA or, or could we look at FEMA or anybody with a back stock on baby formula? This is an emergency now. Yeah, absolutely, Harris. I mean, you just heard Nancy Pelosi say that Elise Stefanik's statement was irresponsible. No, let me tell you what was irresponsible. It was Biden's FDA shutting down the nation's largest manufacturer of baby formula without a plan to backfill the 43% that they make up in the marketplace. That is irresponsible. Prioritizing American uh, kids is the responsible thing to do. Having a secure border. That is the responsible thing to do. Now Nancy Pelosi and the Biden administration, they are playing catch up, just like every other issue. It's a disaster from top to bottom. And I this weekend went to the Donna processing facility myself to make sure that everything was as it was stated to me last week from the Border Patrol agents that were sending me those photos. Yes, there are supplies. Yes, there is baby formula. Yes, they have been stockpiling it. And it's it's not just a supply room off of the corner of the, uh, the processing center. They have not one but two warehouses full of supplies. This is a disaster. And so why not move some of that material? And I mentioned the access that the FDA or FEMA, particularly FEMA, would have. We know we have backstock because we have disasters in our weather and other types of things happening. We know yeah. we have to have them. Yeah, you know, and as the ranking member of the FEMA subcommittee on Homeland Security, mm. I, for the last mm. year, have been going after FEMA and the administration asking why they spent over $130 million out of the food and emergency, emergency temporary housing budget to fly and bust illegals around the United States. Instead of using those funds for Americans, they have been paying for plane tickets and bus tickets and they have spent over $130 million through NGOs. They don't want to give us the information. They want more money so they can continue to manage the flow of illegals. And when Title 42 goes away, everything is going to be bankrupt and we'll be back here again with Nancy Pelosi saying that we need to allocate more money for the border crisis of their own creation. Congresswoman Kamak, you just dropped some numbers and information there that I have not read anywhere. $130 million. Yes. A food emergency fund would be exactly what we need right now. You would think. And, and you're telling me they spent that on those, some of them even surreptitious trips for illegals from the border around the country. Remember, we caught some of those that were not even technically on the record. They were happening at night. I want to get to this. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg pressed on why it is taking so long to resp respond to the formula shortage. I know the president said more actions coming, but this has been ongoing for months. Why has it taken so long? Well, look, the administration acted from day one after the recall. We are here because a company was not able to guarantee that its plant was safe, and that plant has shut down. But that is the federal government's job as regulators to help ensure as safety regulators, of the yes, plant. but let's be very clear. This is a capitalist country. The government does not make baby formula, nor should it. Mm -hmm. Companies make formula. Let's also be really clear. He's in charge of the supply chain crisis, which isn't that part of what we're experiencing now. And by the way, he has two young babies, he and his husband. How are they getting formula?
Oh, I'm sure they're finding a way. Typical, typical of people who were politically connected and of the elite class, mm. they always seem to find a way. But I'll say this. You know, the FDA, the Biden FDA, they shut down the Abbott facility in Michigan. In March, they, the FDA, came out publicly and said that there was no evidence, no scientific evidence of the bacteria found in the Abbott plant in Michigan and the bacteria that tragically killed those two infants. They admitted, the Biden administration admitted there was no connection, and Abbott was under a voluntary recall. Since March, Abbott has been trying to get back online, but it has been crickets, radio silence from the administration. What else does this plant need to do to get back up online? I would be curious from the administration why they haven't been responding to the Abbott folks. Let's get them back online. And another thing, uh, Harris, mm -hmm. when Biden said last week that he was meeting with manufacturers and suppliers like Target and Walmart yeah, the and Gerber. Right. Yeah. Curiously enough, Abbott was not on that call. It kind of makes you wonder why they didn't have the nation's largest manufacturer as part of the conversation. And why haven't they eased tariffs to import baby formula? And why haven't they cut the regulatory tape? And why did they not have a plan on day one? Yeah. Lots that, of questions. It's that plan. And, and I tell you what really sticks out is that information you brought us today, Congresswoman, about that food emergency fund and where millions, $130 million is. Yes. I mean, that just seems like such a key point. Because if this were not an emergency back in November when the recall was happening and, and our own FDA in, in between the process of then and now has said the plant can reopen but, but can't reopen. I mean, they're kind of in a nebulous zone, I suppose. Yes. That constitutes an emergency. That's a long period of time. Exactly. Exactly. And that, to me, just, again, highlights the distorted priorities of this administration. No one has said that we don't care for babies that are in our custody. That's not it at all. And they've created such a sor uh, shortage that no matter if we redistributed all the formula at the border, it still wouldn't make up for the fact that this administration, once again, fumbled the ball, let a problem grow to epic proportions to now where we have American mothers and fathers scrambling to get their kids fed. We've got babies in the ER. Are who are having allergic reactions to formulas they're not used to, that they can't have, and it's because their parents can't get formula anywhere else. Biden is asleep at the wheel once again, and Americans are hurting as a result. Wow, this is dangerous, and the blame game is just stalling. Yes. Uh, great to have you in focus. You brought us a lot of good detail there that we didn't have, including your most recent visit to the border where you could verify uh, the formula that is there that American parents cannot get. Congresswoman, thank you. Thank you so much, Harris.